Good afternoon. Welcome to this uh, Area 1's webinar. Uh, today we're going to talk about how we can stop phishing in minutes. My name is Dominic Kip and I'm the uh, SC Director here at Area 1. So let's get started on talking about how phishing attacks are set up. So we all know that our attackers out there need to do some work in order to be successful at their phishing attacks. So they'll spend a fair amount of time setting up, doing some recon, then they'll need to weaponize their, their attacks and then eventually deploy that and hopefully breach your infrastructure. These attacks typically take you know, anywhere between 10 and 200 days and, or, 200, or 400 days to, to be successful. And, uh, in, and one, in order to, for them to be successful at doing that, they need to, you know, as any good software engineer, they need to set up their infrastructure, test their messages, and deploy their attacks. So, and when they do attack you, they'll go at it from different angles. So obviously, email is the tip of the spear here, but they will also attempt to breach you through web and uh, the, your network uh, infrastructure. So what do we do here at Area 1 to protect you from those phishing attacks? So at Area 1, we focus primarily on early identification of phishing attacks. We aim to provide preemptive protection to your, organi to your organization. So we do that by using our active sensor technology. Uh, the, and in combination with our high-speed web crawler, we can detect the early phases of phishing attacks, and we take all this information and then we distill that into threat rules that your infrastructure can leverage. And this is what we'll talk about today. So once we have all these rules, we can automate those defenses and we can fortify your existing email, web, and network infrastructure. So let's talk a little bit about how our technology works. So as I mentioned earlier, these threat actors need some stable infrastructure in order to do their work. So they'll go out on the internet, they will find systems that can easily be compromised, and from there, they'll do their recon, launch their attacks. And everyone's technology is a combination of active sensors and a high-speed web crawler. So we have the ability to detect those compromised systems and our sensors will collect information from these compromised systems, looking over the shoulder of the attackers, and from there, we can feed this information into our high-speed crawler, and we can determine what kind of activity they're doing. Are they setting up a web server? Are they lighting up IP addresses? Are they crafting phishing messages? And like I mentioned earlier, these attackers need to test their code, and these are all activities that we can detect. So once we've collected all this information, which is about 4.5 petabytes of data, we push that through our analytics engine. So this is a combination of machine learning as well as neural net, and we distill this information into our threat rules. These threat rules are composed of IPs, domain URLs, and file hashes. This is the information that we end up feeding into Net, uh, security devices in order to fortify those defenses and effectively protect your network. From an email perspective, we have our email protection service, and this is an MTA or that, uh, that can scan your messages, and these rules that we've identified through our sparse engine get instantly consumed by uh, the email protection service, as well as a sophisticated algorithm that will analyze the who, what, where, and when of the message. So let's talk a little bit about our integrations here. So when we talk about local edge integration, we integrate into next generation firewall, web proxies, and IDSs. And to do this, we, you know, we are entirely a cloud service here where there's no hardware that needs to be deployed. The only piece of, of software that needs to be installed is a very lightweight virtual machine. And the reason we need to do that is that typically, you know, most customers do not want a cloud service to be able to affect policies on their firewalls. So this connector will act as a middleware where we will download the rules from Area 1 and through API call make modifications to the firewall. So we'll instantiate a category and then you can apply a policy against this category. The next integration we're going to talk about is integration through DNS. So if um, so the 
The firewall and web proxy integrations are great at blocking a good amount of communication, but there are some malware out there that try to be a bit more sophisticated and go around these, uh, these, these defenses. So from a DNS perspective, we have two services that we offer. We have an RPZ service as well as a recursive DNS service. So if you're using a DNS server that has a pretty robust implementation such as Bind and Infoblox, you can directly leverage our RPZ zones. Uh, if your DNS server is not capable of consuming RPZs, then it's just a question of using our recursive DNS. And this is a very simple implementation here. You simply need to modify the DNS forwarders on your DNS servers to point to area one's DNS server instead of your ISPs. And here, whenever a user makes a, a request, the DNS resolution will go through our uh, our zone file here, very similar to the RPZ, and apply uh, a blocking policy against the domains that are malicious. And finally here, let's talk about email. On the email front, uh, we can be deployed either as an MX record or in line uh, as part of your email security solution. So as an MX record, very simply, we are configured as the MX, we will scan the message, and if we do find a malicious detection there, we will introduce the verdict as a next header, and this message will then be delivered to uh, wherever your inboxes are. So either be 0365, Gmail as examples, or on-prem if you're using you know, Exchange on-prem. If you want to preserve your existing MX record, we can absolutely do that. Here, your MX will point to your current email security solution. Once the message is scanned there, will be passed to area one, and again, Area 1 will deliver the end message down to your inbox servers. So a very simple deployments here. You know, we can tackle you know, the 90% plus of phishing attacks through the email service, and uh, you know, the deployment is extremely easy. So let's get ahead here and let's stop phishing attacks. Um, with, Air, with Area 1, we are preemptive. We will protect you across all vectors, and we'll do that in an automated fashion. So if you're interested in an evaluation of Area 1, uh, we can easily do that. And this is, you can simply forward some of your missed fish to us, and we'll do a little analysis on that and return your report. And if you are interested in doing that, simply email your messages to miss.fish at area1security.com. So this concludes the presentation part of the webinar. Um, I did get a few questions here, and I'll uh, take them one by one here. Uh, so one question that came up is, what are the system requirements for the connector? So our connector is extremely lightweight. Uh, it does not require a lot of compute. And like I mentioned earlier, it simply acts as a middleware to interface with your, uh, uh, your edge devices. So you know, low amount of processing does not require a lot of disk or memory. Another question that came in is, how do we block using Gmail? So as I mentioned earlier, as the message traverses our service, we will mark the message, uh, and then once it's delivered into Gmail, you can simply have a content filter there that picks out the X header that, that we've introduced with the disposition, and the action of that filter can either be to drop or to quarantine the message. One thing that we can actually do on the area one side as well is we can add a message prefix, uh, a subject prefix to further highlight the danger of the message, or if you want to be a bit more extreme, we can also introduce a message body prefix on top of the message that further alerts your end users. And finally, we can also defang URLs, meaning we change the URL in the message such that it becomes unclickable. And finally, a question that came in here is, my company does over a million messages per day. Can you manage this? And the answer here is absolutely. We, our, our platform is deployed across uh, cloud providers, and we can elastically grow the service as we need. Um, we do have 14,500 customers here uh, that are pushing over a million and a half messages per day, and we have absolutely no problem uh, you know, scanning these messages. And, it, and that seems to be the last question I have here. And uh, just to remind you, if you are interested in evaluations, please feel free to contact us. And uh, you can also submit your Miss Fish for uh, an evaluation here. And again, the email address here is missed.fish at area1security.com. 
Well, thank you for your time and appreciate uh, you listening and have a great day.